welcome. And uh, I was almost trying to wave at you because uh, it's uh, what we are doing now, waving at the screen. At least I will wave to our audience uh, online. Thanks for coming. Um, and uh, after you know some, some random information about myself, I will introduce myself properly. So my name is Sasha. I am uh, three years with Navis now. And before I was uh, taking care of our digital factory solution uh, for enterprises. And since launch of uh, Navis Ivian Core spring this year, also product manager for Navis Ivian. I will not bore you too much today with uh, slides and get my hands directly on our product. Just one or two introductionary slides. So what is actually Navis Ivian Core? Well, Navis Ivian Core is a reality capturing platform. If you are a laser scanning professional or uh, a AC professional, and it's tailored to your needs, uh, uh, we have developed it exactly for you. And uh, there is a possibility to upload your 3D scans uh, and manage them, share it with your customers. And more uh, importantly, it uh, also makes your mobile mapping devices, uh, mobile mapping workflow more smooth. Now I want uh, to walk you along our typical uh, Navis workflow with Navis technology. So let's start with the first one with capturing the data with uh, VLX. You can see one over there. Now we're like actually uh, capturing a slam anchor. Um, so after capturing the uh, data with Navis VLX, you will actually go and uh, post process it and the cloud processing add-on. Uh, there will be tomorrow actually a presentation about it by our head of uh, product, Lisa. Uh, and uh, you will get an uh, opportunity to learn more about it. We have also the, um, there now at the uh, step three, the possibility to upload your third party data. Since we think that all of your data from uh, whatever device, either TLS or a drone scan, everything should be on one, prob uh, uh, on one platform, so one central point of truth. You probably afterwards want to geo-register your data and uh, quality assure, and then publish and collaborate on it with the customers. And here is the most important point uh, which I wanted to make is actually that in this way you can add more uh, value to your data and uh, lift it up from just being data to being an interactive digital twin. And also work on data, export it and work on it in third party devices. So without further ado, um, give a warm welcome to Navis Ivion Core. Oh, thank you. It's uh, its first trade show, uh, so uh, yeah, be really nice uh, to to our little Navis Ivion. Okay. Okay, it's a bit slow. What's happening? Okay, it's not reacting at all. Uh, sorry, one technical problem here on my side? Just the interface is not reacting. OK. So here we are landing already here at uh, um, our login screen for. OK. Yep. Nice. Was uh, um, unfortunately not being able to log in for a second. So um, now we are at uh, the logging screen. And uh, um, because it might be uh, important for your customers to have only um, authorized users uh, who will have access to the data, um, it is possible to make the data also public if uh, your client is a public authority. So once you have landed here at uh, our Navis Ivion core, you will uh, land directly at uh, uh, the dashboard with an overview of all of your projects here. And you would ask probably, why should you actually go with one overview um, of your project? It's like, first of all, 
you have to set up it only once. You don't need to do like multiple setup. Um, and you have also uh, the possibility to have multiple users which have different uh, management rights. So you have here a user who um, has an admin uh, uh, right for one site. It's uh, an editor uh, right for another site. So they can then work on everything in parallel. And it's also just a matter of one click uh, adding a new site. So let's uh, do it together. It just, um, yeah, that's much better. So let's create a test site together. And here you have an opportunity either to pick a point on the map or to type in an address or to go to the advanced settings and here choose a special reference system. We are, Navis uh, Ivan Core supports over 4,000 uh, uh, local and global uh, coordinate systems for geo-referenced, uh, um, it's for geo-referencing your data. So let's take, for example, this one and create a site. So as you've seen, it's uh, just a matter of a couple of clicks to, to really create a site. And then uh, once you're going in the site, you will ask to either upload the data from uh, the process, uh, or which is already processed, or upload the data and uh, uh, process it first. Uh, due to time reasons, I will uh, actually not uh, uh, do it now. So, and I think everybody is uh, actually excited maybe to see our Navis headquarter office. So I have prepared it already. So we have here a nicely set up data of our headquarter. And I will show you a couple of more things here. We have assumed that we have the data uploaded and already processed. So the next step would be actually going to a data set management. And here, either upload the bundle, or you can see here down below, also here importing your point clouds for different formats. So it could be A57, PTS, PTX, PLY formats, all the different uh, uh, opportunities for you to import the data which is generated by other devices. Moving next to our next step is uh, the data set alignment. And here in the data set alignment, let's open the site menu and see you here, you see uh, all the different data sets. And here you have the opportunity to either transform uh, and uh, use those transform buttons uh, for alignment or or to use the automatic alignment. So let's try it out with the automatic alignment. At least I will show you um, a sneak peek. So we will activate one more data set, unlock it. And then what uh, you would do actually in reality is uh, move this data set somewhere close to the point where it should be, and then go down to the uh, automatic alignment, choose one unlocked data set and then align it. Due to time reasons, I will actually not dive deeper into it, uh, but uh, um, you can definitely try it out uh, yourself by just going uh, to our um, iv.navis.com and uh, making a, a test instance for yourself. So after the data is all aligned, you will probably would love to QA it. And here we have uh, this nice site uh, views possibilities to do a QA of your data. Let me show you just one example. So you're doing a slice. And then in the site view, you can really see if the data is aligned nicely. I have misaligned it before, so it's probably not. Um, but here you can see how you're using this slice. You can really, really go through and see if the data is nicely aligned. And with this, actually, all the steps of the data setup is actually done. And everything which I will show now is more about adding some value to your data, actually. 
And the first thing I would like you to see is uh, the so-called site model. And site model, what it makes is just adds a basic structure to your building. So you can see that at our Navis headquarters, we have uh, like five floors, we have a zero floor, and we also have uh, here a basement. And this is what is already uh, nicely preset. It's also auto-generated. You can adjust the auto-generated uh, um, site model. Uh, but here you can see already that uh, the data is uh, already lifted up one level um, from being just a point cloud for now also having a structure of floors. You can also add there some, some rooms quite easily. You can see that here's, wait, we'll deactivate the side view and add one room. Yep. So it's easily to add the rooms uh, to, to your overview and to have the floors. And with this, not only you have the floors now, but uh, you will also have automatically generated uh, floor maps for each of the floors. So now, we, as I said, like those five floors and uh, three in the basement. So you can see, so for each of those, we now have a mini map which is generated just out of uh, our uh, point cloud data. So if we zoom in and give it a second, we can really see all the assets, all the details, it's uh, almost possible to read some text. And there are two ways how your customer like, can consume actually this data. So for sure, as you have uh, seen already, it's uh, just a web-based platform. You don't need to set up anything or your customer doesn't really need to set up any, every, anything. Just opening the link, just consuming the data from here, opening, checking the status quo, looking at panel pictures. Or there is, uh, of course, uh, the opportunity to see what is underneath. So you see already the mouse cursor is uh, kind of moving in a way that is uh, uh, not just going over the picture. It has a desk. So let's take a look actually at this point at the point cloud. This might be that internet connection is not the best here. We will still just wait a couple of seconds and uh, take a look at how um, the point cloud will look like after it's fully loaded. And the point cloud data, of course, we know that uh, there are multiple third-party softwares uh, which cu your customer might want to consume uh, the point cloud data. So uh, therefore, we actually uh, uh, not only allow you to upload the third-party data into Ivian Core, I think the internet connection uh, here will not make it, unfortunately. So let's go back to our panel mode. Um, but what I said, like, for sure, your customer wants to download maybe the point cloud data, and this is where our you know, feature with uh, cropping and downloading is uh, coming in. So here you have an opportunity to ad adjust into D the area you would like to download, and then go into 3D and fine tune it even more. And here then on the bottom right, First, the site, uh, uh, the coordinate system can be chosen. So either a site coordinate system or a special reference system. And also it can be downloaded in different formats. So it can be downloaded in E57 format, LAS, PLY format. So once you're opening it in another software, it's uh, uh, then in a correct format. You don't have uh, to, to do something in between. There are just two more features I would like to share with you which are really lifting the data to another level of uh, from just being the data to uh, being like uh, more valuable and also smarter data. You, let's assume we would like to measure actually this window here in front of us using our measurement tool. First, uh, we have really upgraded our measurement tool over the last couple of years. So now you have an opportunity to, have to do horizontal measurements, uh, to do uh, um, vertical measurements, free measurements. 
For the window, we obviously would like uh, uh, to have in a vertical rectangle measurement. And now you see this point picker or magnifying glass, which is a patent is actually pending for, for now for this one. And uh, um, we can really pick the points really accurately. So you can see even from far away, we can really accurately pick the points um, for, for this window. And with this, go and measure the window. Let's do one more free measurement. Uh, for example, a also vertical measurement from the ceiling to the table. And maybe one more um, a horizontal, maybe like a, any a rough measurement of this table would be also easily done just in a 2D view. All of those measurements can then uh, uh, be shared with uh, your clients or with uh, uh, your colleagues so to work on collaboratively, uh, collaboratively on it. So you see you have export possibility to export a PDF or to have the links to each of those measurements. And last but not least, you have spotted probably somewhere already those so-called points of interest, POIs. And the POIs, the context uh, of those can be text, can be video, it uh, can be uh, uh, also links to other uh, things. I will just show you, let's walk through it once and see how uh, easy is it actually to create a POI. So we will create a POI which will uh, go to um, a maintenance employee. So just uh, check opening, choosing the category maintenance. And then here we can paste the text, as I said, and add some, some media. And with this, the POI is already created. It's, uh, you, you can see it's uh, just an annotation. It's uh, uh, good to store some information, but also make part of uh, the client's workflow. For sure, you can also search for those POIs. So it's uh, actually the last one we are coming to. I have created it for just Intergeo. Um, we have the embedded, uh, um, embedded uh, site of uh, navis.com, where you can stay always up to date on our information. We can go to, we should go to now Navis Ivion. And I would like to summarize, actually, why should you go for Navis Ivion Core? And uh, here there are five points I, I want you to look at. But most uh, importantly, that it's just super efficient and super quick to register, to publish your data, to share it with customer, everything within a web browser. So you've seen I've been uh, within the web browser for all of the parts of my presentation. It then uh, also allows you to inspect, to plan, to measure, to make annotations. It uh, improves your efficiency of how you are working for the whole team. Um, and uh, uh, they can access the point cloud from anywhere, optimizes your BIM workflows. And last but not least, as I was uh, already emphasizing it quite a lot of times, it uh, makes your data more valuable. And it's uh, lifting it from the, the being just data uh, to having a lot of additional features and a, a lot of additional possibilities how you can use it. With this said, let's go back to our presentation and jump over it. There are just two happy faces I just wanted you to see. Um, it's uh, one from LE44, who is already using our Navis Ivion Core, and uh, another one uh, from TruePoint Laser Scanning. And I really hope that some of the people which uh, might see the Navis Ivion Core here on the trade show will be also happy customers of ours. And with this said, um, that's all. Do you have any 
questions. Uh, we will also have uh, the whole product management team will uh, have uh, office hours as well from three to five, I assume. So thank you.